What? Your entire economic model is to what steer your viewers. Should, That's what your other whole sport? gig. I mean, Steve, you and really the only want, way you really that want you football change your to be behavior. bad. Yeah, you want football to be no, bad. No, I, I mean, don't. You, this you is what you do. You play this game. Oh, come on. You, you, what, you, you want football essentially changed into, I don't know. Laura Ingram has made it clear in the past that she believes athletes should shut up and play, especially when it comes to expressing political opinions. Unless, of course, those opinions align with her views or support Donald Trump. Otherwise, she prefers they stay quiet. Recently, she had a guest on her show to discuss this topic, but things didn't go as expected. The guest pushed back against her, which is something you don't often see on Fox News. David Pakman broke down the entire situation, and we're going to take a look at clips from Laura Ingraham's show on Fox News, along with Pakman's analysis. I'll also share my thoughts throughout. It's an interesting exchange. Let's dive in and check it out together. Steve Almond has been a guest on my program multiple times, and I don't like calling Steve a sports writer because he writes about so many things. But Steve does sometimes write about sports. Laura Ingram on Fox News thought it would be a good idea to bring Steve Almond on last night to talk about what's going on with Damar Hamlin who um, suffered a cardiac arrest during the game on uh, Monday night. We've talked about it already to some degree. Uh, this was a very, very bad idea for Laura Ingram. Um, he brings up that Fox News has thrown money to settle sexual assault claims in sort of making an analogy to how the NFL will settle brain injury stuff without actually changing the underlying circumstances of football that allow the brain injuries to become common. Everything about this interview is absolutely fantastic. And eventually Laura Ingram just cuts it off when he tries to bring up Laura Ingram's past misdeeds when she taunted Parkland shooting survivors, uh, leading advertisers to flee her show. This is really good. Let's go to the first clip. Putting monitors and helmets to try to make sure that People aren't suffering too many concussive or sub concussive events. These are things the NFL could do tomorrow, but they're not going to do it until there's an economic incentive. The reason they settled that lawsuit is because they had a PR problem. It's like at Fox News when you have, uh, you know, hosts who are allegedly sexually harassing people. Fox News throws money at that to right. make that PR problem go away. That's what happens so with do big you not, corporations or powerful right, so people. Well, nobody, nobody has done more. I mean, you know that, Laura, right? You know that. Well, yeah, that's that's a cute little move, but I'm. I love it how every time guests call out Fox on Fox, these hosts have some line like, oh, that's cute. That's a cute move. No, he's showing up and he's pointing out that that which you are criticizing someone else for your employer also does. It's not about being cute. It's that they don't know how to handle it when guests actually point these things out. Let's go to another clip here. They have enormous no, amount the of, fans of influence. Are the ones what who, happened during well, George the Floyd? They had enormous amount of influence on corporate America, the actions of corporate America, the actions of the NFL. I mean, they changed the whole corporate approach to race and equity and, and all the things that happened two and a half years ago. So you say the players don't have all that much influence. I would say the players have an enormous amount of influence, maybe not as much as they want, but there's there's huge economic uh, yeah. upside for everyone here. Correct. Well, I know you're focused on the players. I'm focused on the fans. And what I essentially believe is not that any government ban is going to make football safer and certainly not some mythic woke mob that you mentioned to try to scare your viewers. I think it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm not trying to scare the viewers. Football is not about politics. It's not about politics. Oh, you're I making think that's it your about entire politics. economic model. It's interesting to see Laura Ingraham act surprised and defensive when confronted about the idea that her show tries to scare viewers. Fox News often focuses on narratives that suggest certain groups are out to get you or whether it's immigrants or other perceived threats. So uh, it's ironic for her to act shocked when a guest calls her out for using fear as a tactic, considering it's a big part of the network's approach to keep viewers engaged. What? Your entire economic model is to what scare other your sport viewers. Should, That's what your other whole sport? gig. I mean, Steve, you and really the only want, way you really that want you football change to your be behavior. Bad. Yeah, you want football to be no, bad. No, I, I mean, don't. You, this you is what you this do. Game. Oh, come on. You, you, what, you, you want football essentially changed into, I don't know what, like, I, I don't know, you have a sensor in the helmet, I guess. Okay. 
propose one. You know, it, well, is, you that, know is that, is that technology to troubling to you? No, not in the if slightest. If you're concerned about the not players, not in the slightest. Why wouldn't not you want the them slightest. to play in a way that I is safer? You're not I concerned about the players. The thing about people like Laura Ingram is Steve Almond accurately points out it's it, it is about scaring viewers. It's all about scaring viewers. And when it comes to football, the way they the really scary thing about football, and I, and I now have friends who have kids who are sort of starting to get curious about football and they're like, oh, my goodness, the last thing I want is my kid to play football. So they're trying to find a balance between straight up saying you are not allowed to play because then that can cause this kind of reaction where the kid goes, well, I really want to play if I'm not allowed to play just kind of finding the right way to dissuade, softly dissuade uh, their, their kids from wanting to play football. The, the thing about football is it is fundamentally dangerous. The brain injury stuff is completely off the charts. It's shocking to me that football even still sort of exists at the college level. And I think it's possible that if and when the lawsuits start at the college level, uh, it will really, really damage the, the prospects of football. I, I find it you know, mildly entertaining. There's other sports I like better, but it just seems crazy that it's still a thing. Laura Ingram and her model and the model of Fox is we've got to scare the audience. We have to scare the audience and, and ideally about what the left or, or someone uh, uh, external to our movement is doing. So with football, it's they want to have a nanny state where they ban a sport or they want to overregulate football by saying, oh, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to force players out. Concussion protocols are too strict or sensors in the helmet. It's all crazy or what it all has to be fear, fear, fear. They're going to take it away. And with football, there's also the patriotism angle, which they love, which is there's something patriotic and manly. It's both patriotic and manly. And so any skepticism about football and, and football's viability is not only sissy, it's also anti-American. This is the whole sort of narrative. But when it like comes right down to it, Laura Ingram kind of has no choice but to say, no, I mean, I guess I'd be fine with a sensor with a sensor in the helmet that indicates, you know, what were the what were the G forces? Was there a possible concussion or whatever the case may be? Because these are these are perfectly logical things as half measures to really dealing with football big picture. Now, this is not the hill I'm going to die on. I'm not going around looking to end football. It seems a bit like wishful thinking to say that football will disappear anytime soon. While I don't believe the sport is going anywhere, I do think there's some truth in what's being said about the odd blend of football and patriotism. As a big college football fan myself, I've always found the military flyovers and displays at games a bit strange. The involvement of the Department of Defense and these elaborate displays of patriotism in college football and the NFL is a separate issue, but it's still worth noting. As a football fan, I don't understand why anyone wouldn't want players to be as safe as possible. Improvements in helmet designs, pads, and other safety measures have been made to protect the athletes, and it's hard to see why some people criticize those efforts. There's a mindset out there, as David Pakman has pointed out, where some fans believe that making things safer somehow makes the players less tough. It would be interesting to see those same critics try to spend a day on the field with professional or college athletes. They'd probably change their tune quickly. Ultimately, if you're a fan of the game, like Laura Ingraham presumably is, why wouldn't you want players to be as safe as possible while still maintaining the essence of the sport? There's definitely a balance that can be struck between keeping the game exciting and ensuring player safety. It just doesn't make sense to want anything less. Uh, but this is how these folks operate. Make everybody afraid. Steve Allman's completely right. When it comes down to it, you go, well, it's not so much that I'm opposed to thing number one or two or three, but we should be very afraid of what they are trying to do. Here's the last segment during which Steve Allman points out she had a problem with advertisers fleeing for things she said, and then she just ends the interview. So thrilling. The reason that people change their behavior is because there's an economic incentive. A couple of years ago, when you talked right, to the survivor of Parkland yeah. mass shooting, All you right, apologized oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. advertisers Steve, withdrew nice try, from your show. Buddy. And your nice try, buddy. Little buddy. I appreciate it. It's cut. It is cut, cut, cut. Um, yeah. So other guests have done this stuff before. And the reaction from the hot Fox hosts is is very similar. It's cut it, laugh it off and say it's an ambush or it's cute or it's funny or whatever the case may be. Standard M.O. They all seem to know how to do it, but very nicely done by Steve Almond. And I mean, listen, this is Steve Almond's bailiwick, right? 
that to invite him and think he's not going to do this is really the thing that shows you don't really know who he, who he is. Really nice job. We should have him back on the show. It's always refreshing when someone is able to go on Fox News with hosts like Laura Ingraham and call them out for what they truly are, fear mongers. As David Pakman pointed out, it doesn't happen often, but when it does, it's great to see. Hosts like Laura Ingraham thrive on a business model of fear, constantly pushing the narrative that everything is changing in a way their viewers don't like, and that various groups are somehow threatening their way of life. Ingraham's audience, often in their 70s, watches a lot of news and can be particularly susceptible to this kind of fear-mongering. David Pakman did a great job exposing this in his segment, showing clips from Laura Ingram's show and breaking it down for viewers. Let me know what you think. Share your thoughts on David Pakman, Laura Ingram, Fox News, or anything else you'd like to comment on. I love reading your thoughts, as well as seeing your likes and subscribes. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so. This is Cultural Spotlight, and I'll see you in the next video.